Hi, I'm Emily Peck. I am head of conversation design at Natomi. We're an AI first company that uses AI for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to provide the highest quality customer experiences. Our clients use our technology to anticipate, understand, and fulfill their customers' needs. So today we're not going to focus on what's under the hood of our platform and the AI engine that makes everything work, but we're gonna look at the softer side, the conversational experience for your end users. In our last session, we looked at good conversation design and how to develop really efficient workflows. And today we're going to delve into how to nail down that personality and the right tone or the way in which you speak to your users to provide the optimal experience. So why does this even matter? The personality of your virtual assistant can have a significant impact on the experience and lays the foundation for trust, respect, and likability. It can actually be the determining factor into whether a person interacts with your virtual assistant again or not. And as AI becomes the new interface for customer experience, spanning way beyond siloed chatbots or email assistants, it's becoming a true extension and expression of your brand. It's a lot more intimate. We're truly speaking to the audience of one, and we want to make sure that we're having the right tone that's authentic. And for those of you still weary about the importance, I want to look at an example. Say someone comes in and says, I got married and I need to change my name. And your virtual assistant responds, thanks for letting us know. Please tell me your new name. Okay, now say it responds with champagne bottles and a much more casual response. Congrats, what's the new name? So here you can see the meaning behind both messages is the same. You're still prompting a user to provide this, their new name. It's the same information you're seeking, but it feels very different for your user. And that all comes down to personality. We want one that is authentic, but also maintains consistency. You don't want to respond to one message more formally and then follow up with one message that has popping champagne bottle emojis. That's a lot more fun and casual. Your virtual assistant will then become less likable and less trustworthy if your tone and style is all over the place. So before we get we dive into how we approach personality design at Natomi, I want to touch on what we need to avoid. First, we don't want to save the persona development until the end. The cherry on top after topics have been trained, workflows have been developed, small talk has been created. If we do that, then you're going to essentially have to do a lot of double work you're gonna to have to go back and tweak all copy to ensure consistency. At the same time, we don't wanna overthink our personality. For AI deployed and customer experience, we don't need elaborate backstories, character development, which it is really fun to do, but it's unnecessary. We don't want an over-the-top personality that gets in the way of the interaction. People reach out and want to accomplish something. So we don't wanna have chatter get in the way of this. Subtlety here really is key. And finally, we want to ensure that there's flexibility. We need guideposts for our personality and tone and style, but we also want to ensure flexibility so we can adapt to the context, the conversation, and the user. I mentioned this, but with virtual assistants that perform tasks, whether that's answering a support question, changing a flight, upgrading a hotel, facilitating a return, people prefer speed and ease. Big personalities just get in the way. Let's look at an example. So a passenger messages an airline and asks about earlier flights. And the AI responds, hi, it's me, your virtual assistant, here to help. I understand that you can't wait to get on the road. Whether you're coming or going, let's see if we can get you there sooner. So tell me, what's your confirmation number? Well, that's a lot of chatter. We're asking the user to read a lot of text before we get to the prompt. Now, imagine the AI responds simply with, let's see, what's your confirmation number? This is more direct, it's more to the point. The prompt to the user is the same, but we're cutting down on a lot of the clutter and it provides a much better user experience. And when we think about deciding on the right tone, we need to think about a few things. First, what do your customers expect when they reach out? What is their perception of your brand? We also need to think about your brand guidelines and how the brand perceives itself. Now, these don't always align, but we need to find that sweet spot that aligns with expectations and perception, but also remains authentic to your brand. If a customer reaches out to their bank 
and is greeted by a very casual, quirky AI, it might raise a little bit of an alarm. Finances are serious business, not something you want represented by some joke-cracking virtual assistant. On the other hand, a more casual persona coming from a swimwear company or an online shoe brand or casual eatery would make a lot more sense. You don't want to use your virtual assistant, which is an extension of your brand, as the playground to try out drastic changes in your branding. So a good place to start is thinking about the role the AI is playing in your customer's lives. Is it taking on the role of a customer service assistant, resolving issues and answering questions? Here, empathy, trustworthiness, succinctness, that all might make sense. Or say your virtual assistant is a concierge, expected to have a lot of knowledge and is communicating with somebody who has little or no knowledge on a topic. Then maybe more proactive experience, patient and thorough is more appropriate. A personal shopper AI would be expected to have deep knowledge of products and services, be detail oriented, friendly, perhaps enthusiastic. While reservation agents might have to have quick responses uh, to questions, be efficient and courteous. There's a lot of different ways that we can go with tone. You can be more formal, talking like, good, good evening, what is the reason you're reaching out today? Or informal, hey, hey, how can I help? Warm, hey there, I'm here to help. What can I do for you? Or cool, hi. What do you need? Enthusiastic, oh my gosh, hello. Can I help you discover awesome products? Or matter of fact, welcome. I can help you manage your order or discover new products. Maybe humorous, what's kicking little chicken? Want to track down that order of yours? Or serious, greetings. What are you looking to accomplish? These of course are not binary. There's, a, there's definitely a scale. But we want to go back to what your customer perception is What's authentic to your tone of voice as a brand and the role it plays in your users' lives? When figuring this out, we want to map the tone to what's most important to your user in a specific interaction. And now this is from your user's point of view. It's not the brand's point of view. If your users were to talk to someone about their experience interacting with your AI, how would you want them to describe it? Perhaps it's efficiency. So if a person asks, uh, if their connecting flight is still out of gate A3, an efficient response would be, no, B10. Maybe it's not efficiency, maybe it's more guiding. So your gate changed to B10, but don't worry, you can get there in less than 10 minutes. Follow the signs to the terminal train, take the escalator down and take the train going towards terminal B and C. It'll be the first stop. You can see there's drastic differences in the way that you're responding, this might also change based on who the customer is that is reaching out. Somebody who travels all the time and is, has been at this particular airport many times probably don't need all of that additional information. Whereas one of your customers, maybe it's their first time having a connection in this very busy airport, they might appreciate a little bit more context and information. Other interaction goals might be you know, to have a truly frictionless experience. So maybe an efficient response, but then spoon feeding additional content to the user that they can simply tap to find more information. Or perhaps for your user, they might prefer personalization. Hi, Emma, your flight FL9182 to Denver is now out of gate B10. Your boarding group one will be called to board in the next 20 minutes or so. You can see that when we think about the goal of the interaction, the tone in which you speak to a customer and the style, can change quite significantly. But of course, we wanna make things a little bit more complex. The interaction goals might change based on the situation and therefore your tone should too. Imagine one of your customers is reaching out and they're standing on the street corner with, a, with an umbrella in their hand. They're just looking for a quick answer. They're going to have a very different goal for the interaction than somebody lounging on a Saturday afternoon, scrolling the web on their computer. And this can also change based on somebody who is you know, also on that same smaller screen as the person with an umbrella. But they're leisurely out and about, they've got a couple of minutes on their hands, they're not in as big of a rush. We wanna think about 
all of the different contexts that our users might be in to make sure that we adapt and provide that optimal user experience. So a couple of other things that should be considered. So first, customer profile. How familiar is somebody with your brand? Is this their first interaction? Or are they longtime loyal customers who reach out to you frequently? If they're new to your brand, they might need a little bit more information and guidance versus somebody who interacts with your brand a lot, probably less so. You also wanna think about the intent in which somebody is reaching out. Are they seeing, uh, are they reaching out to cash in on some loyalty points and maybe find a, a hotel for the weekend? Or are they reaching out about, about a lost bag? Also, what's the sentiment? Are they stressed, excited, irate? We need to adapt. And the sentiment, even within the same intent or topic that a person has reached out to you, that could, uh, the sentiment could, could vary greatly as well. You definitely want to keep that in mind. So similar to that umbrella versus the couch situation, we want to think about our user's context. Are there certain time constraints that they are under? What's going on around them? Are they driving in a car, standing in the rain? Are they in a crowd, cooking dinner? trying to drop their kids off at daycare. There's a lot of different situations that are going around our users that's going to change what they want out of an interaction. Channel, of course, plays a very important role here. We want to alter our communication and adapt our communication to the channel. So chat and messaging versus voice versus email versus conversational search, all of those have different requirements. We also want to think about the conversational context. So of course, this includes sentiment, but also thinking about what have they previously asked? How did they react to those responses? And how are they communicating with us? If somebody's talk, you know, asking and providing a lot of detail and a question and a prompt, they might be more open and more appreciative of a more detailed and thorough response. Whereas somebody who is you know, talking really short, succinct sentences or questions might want that in, in return. So as you can see, your users are going to be reaching out in a lot of different situations and your AI should be flexible. So we want to go back to the idea of tone guideposts. We want to have consistency uh, and not be all over the place in terms of our style, but we wanna make sure that we're flexible and can adapt to the different contexts that our users are in. A couple of other things that we want to think about when it comes to chatting style um, is things like emojis. So does your brand use this? Does it make sense? Is it authentic uh, to your way of communication? And if you're going to use these, in what context and how frequently? You know, I've seen quite a few examples reaching out and just to companies that are I, you know, I'm customers of. And there'll be a really casual um, introduction with a smiley face emoji or a waving hand. And then every response that follows is really corporate and buttoned up. We really wanna make sure that we have that consistency. There's also just random emojis that you will see um, in different responses. We also wanna avoid that. We wanna have that level of consistency because if something feels out of place, then it's jarring um, and can really diminish the overall uh, interaction experience. We also want to think about the use of images, so GIFs, stickers, videos, and how and when they are used. Are they purely functional? So are we using those to, you know, a how-to video, for instance? Are we adding in, you know, funny GIFs in the right context to make it a little bit more lighthearted and fun? And this is stuff you want to think about from the beginning so you can ha have that consistency throughout all of your interaction. You also want to think about answer delay. So this is really comes down to how long does it take for you to send one answer and then maybe follow up with the next. Some companies want to do this very quickly and uh, send message after message. Others want to bake in delays. So maybe it feels a little bit more natural um, and human-like. Also want to think about grammar. So. Are you um, grammatically correct? Uh, or do you use short form, like how many of us uh, text our friends and family? 
I also want to think about the use of exclamation points. Some companies want to avoid this altogether. It can, can come off as maybe you're overexcited or even yelling or screaming, while other companies like to use these sparingly. It's really up to you um, and what feels authentic uh, to your brand. So as you think about the tone for your virtual assistant, I'm sure everyone has used at one point or another chat GPT, and it's really fun to play around with, especially around um, things like tone and style. So there's prompts that you can throw in to first of all, figure out that baseline. What are our customers used to seeing from us? Um, I would take, you know, website content, even marketing emails, but also the way your, your agents have responded or if there's templates that exist. And ask ChatGPT or other tools, what is the tone of this? Because again, how we perceive um, something, you know, the internal audience might be very different from how your customers perceive it. So it's kind of fun to throw out prompts like analyze the message for personality and style or describe the tone of this content in three words. And then if you have new content, apply the same tone to this content. So it can be really fun to just kind of go and figure out what are your brands, what are your customers used to seeing from you? There's a few other um, prompts and of course with these tools, the more details that you get, um, you know, the, the better outcomes you'll get. So if you have new content that you wanna try and play around with, you can give it prompts like rewrite the following in a fun and casual way. For instance, uh, like you were describing it to a friend or your mother, your grandmother, a third grader. That's really fun. Um, but again, the more uh, detailed and specific you get, um, the better outcome. So we can take that even a step further. Rewrite this in the following style, short, enthusiastic, like you were describing it to a person who's very familiar, unfamiliar with the product or service and you're trying to get them excited or to purchase something. So you can really go, um, you can really have fun with a lot of these tools to figure out what, are, what your customers used to sing from you and try out different styles and tones as well. Just to wrap up, uh, when you're thinking about your AI personality and the tone in which it's communicating to your customers, you need to balance those customer expectations with your brand guidelines. You don't wanna try something completely new on this interface that is so inherently intimate. AI really is that new interface and it's going to expand um, across all channels and be that connection layer for your customers and your company. So you wanna make sure something feels very authentic. And if your tone and style is all over the place, then that's going to lead to a lack of trust and likability. You never want to let the personality overshadow or get in the way of the interaction for customer experience and things like customer service in particular. With AI, there's a task or goal that your customers are looking to accomplish. That should always be the priority. And lastly, while it's important to have tone guideposts, we wanna make sure that we're having consistency. We also wanna make sure that we're adapting to the specific user, their situation, context, history, experience with your brands, on and on and on. So thank you so much for attending today's you know, quick educational session on generating personality for your virtual assistant. We'll see you at the next one.